Paleoclimatology, Wikipedia article audio. Paleoclimatology is the study of changes in climate taken on the scale of the entire history of Earth. It uses a variety of proxy methods from the Earth and life sciences to obtain data previously preserved within things such as rocks, sediments, ice sheets, tree rings, corals, shells, and microfossils. It then uses the records to determine the past states of the Earth's various climate regions and its atmospheric system. Studies of past changes in the environment and biodiversity often reflect on the current situation, specifically the impact of climate on mass extinctions and biotic recovery. History Reconstructing Ancient Climates Ice Dendroclimatology Sedimentary Content Sclerochronology Landscapes and Landforms Limitations Notable Climate Events in Earth History History of the Atmosphere Earliest Atmosphere Second Atmosphere Third Atmosphere Climate during Geological Ages Precambrian Climate Phanerozoic Climate Quaternary Climate Climate Forcings Internal Processes and Forcings External Forcings Mechanisms Notes Bibliography The scientific study field of paleoclimate began to form in the early 19th century, when discoveries about glaciations and natural changes in Earth's past climate helped to understand the greenhouse effect. The first observations which had a real scientific basis were probably those by John Hardcastle in New Zealand, in the 1880s. He noted that the lowest deposits at Demaru in the South Island recorded changes in climate, he called the Lois A. Climate Register. Paleoclimatologists employ a wide variety of techniques to deduce ancient climates. Mountain glaciers and the polar ice caps slash ice sheets provide much data in paleoclimatology. Ice coring projects in the ice caps of Greenland and Antarctica have yielded data going back several hundred thousand years, over 800,000 years in the case of the Epica project. Climatic information can be obtained through an understanding of changes in tree growth. Generally, trees respond to changes in climatic variables by speeding up or slowing down growth which in turn is generally reflected by a greater or lesser thickness in growth rings. Different species, however, respond to changes in climatic variables in different ways. A tree ring record is established by compiling information from many living trees in a specific area. Older intact wood that has escaped decay can extend the time covered by the record by matching the ring depth changes to contemporary specimens. By using that method, some areas have tree ring records dating back a few thousand years. Older wood not connected to a contemporary record can be dated generally with radiocarbon techniques. A tree ring record can be used to produce information regarding precipitation, temperature, hydrology, and fire corresponding to a particular area. On a longer time scale, geologists must refer to the sedimentary record for data. Within climatic geomorphology one approach is to study relict landforms to infer ancient climates. Being often concerned about past climates climatic geomorphology is considered sometimes to be a theme of historical geology. Climatic geomorphology is of limited use to study recent large climate changes since there are seldom discernible in the geomorphological record. A multinational consortium, the European Project for Ice Coring in Antarctica, 
has drilled an ice core in Dome C on the East Antarctic Ice Sheet and retrieved ice from roughly 800,000 years ago. The International Ice Core Community has, under the auspices of International Partnerships in Ice Core Sciences, defined a priority project to obtain the oldest possible ice core record from Antarctica, an ice core record reaching back to or towards 1.5 million years ago. The deep marine record, the source of most isotopic data, exists only on oceanic plates, which are eventually subducted, the oldest remaining material is 200 million years old. Older sediments are also more prone to corruption by diagenesis. Resolution and confidence in the data decrease over time. Knowledge of precise climatic events decreases as the record goes back in time, but some notable climate events are known. The first atmosphere would have consisted of gases in the solar nebula, primarily hydrogen. In addition, there would probably have been simple hydrides such as those now found in gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn, notably water vapor, methane, and ammonia. As the solar nebula dissipated, the gases would have escaped, partly driven off by the solar wind. The next atmosphere, consisting largely of nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and inert gases, was produced by outgassing from volcanism, supplemented by gases produced during the late heavy bombardment of Earth by huge asteroids. A major part of carbon dioxide emissions were soon dissolved in water and built up carbonate sediments. Water-related sediments have been found dating from as early as 3.8 billion years ago. About 3.4 billion years ago, Nitrogen was the major part of the then stable second atmosphere. An influence of life has to be taken into account rather soon in the history of the atmosphere because hints of early life forms have been dated to as early as 3.5 billion years ago. The fact that it is not perfectly in line with the 30% lower solar radiance of the early sun has been described as the faint young sun paradox. The geological record, however, shows a continually relatively warm surface during the complete early temperature record of Earth with the exception of one cold glacial phase about 2.4 billion years ago. In the late Archean Aeon, an oxygen-containing atmosphere began to develop, apparently from photosynthesizing cyanobacteria which have been found as stromatolite fossils from 2.7 billion years ago. The early basic carbon isotopy was very much in line with what is found today, suggesting that the fundamental features of the carbon cycle were established as early as 4 billion years ago. The constant rearrangement of continents by plate tectonics influences the long-term evolution of the atmosphere by transferring carbon dioxide to and from large continental carbonate stores. Free oxygen did not exist in the atmosphere until about 2.4 billion years ago, during the Great Oxygenation Event, and its appearance is indicated by the end of the banded iron formations. Until then, any oxygen produced by photosynthesis was consumed by oxidation of reduced materials, notably iron. Molecules of free oxygen did not start to accumulate in the atmosphere until the rate of production of oxygen began to exceed the availability of reducing materials. That point was a shift from a reducing atmosphere to an oxidizing atmosphere. O2 showed major variations until reaching a steady state of more than 15% by the end of the Precambrian. The following time span was the Phanerozoic Aeon during which oxygen-breathing metazoan life forms began to appear. The amount of oxygen in the atmosphere has fluctuated over the last 600 million years, reaching a peak of 35% during the Carboniferous period, significantly higher than today's 21%. Two main processes govern changes in the atmosphere, 
Plants use carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, releasing oxygen, and the breakdown of pyrite and volcanic eruptions release sulfur into the atmosphere, which oxidizes and hence reduces the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. However, volcanic eruptions also release carbon dioxide, which plants can convert to oxygen. The exact cause of the variation of the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere is not known. Periods with much oxygen in the atmosphere are associated with rapid development of animals. Today's atmosphere contains 21% oxygen, which is high enough for rapid development of animals. The climate of the late Precambrian showed some major glaciation events spreading over much of the Earth. At this time the continents were bunched up in the Rodinia supercontinent. Massive deposits of tillites and anomalous isotopic signatures are found, which gave rise to the snowball earth hypothesis. As the Proterozoic Eon drew to a close, the earth started to warm up. By the dawn of the Cambrian and the Phanerozoic, Life forms were abundant in the Cambrian explosion with average global temperatures of about 22 degrees Celsius. Major drivers for the pre-industrial ages have been variations of the sun, volcanic ashes and exhalations, relative movements of the earth towards the sun, and tectonically induced effects as for major sea currents, watersheds and ocean oscillations. In the early Phanerozoic Increased atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations have been linked to driving or amplifying increased global temperatures. Royer ETAL 2004 found a climate sensitivity for the rest of the Phanerozoic which was calculated to be similar to today's modern range of values. The difference in global mean temperatures between a fully glacial Earth and an ice-free Earth is estimated at approximately 10 degrees Celsius, though far larger changes would be observed at high latitudes and smaller ones at low latitudes. One requirement for the development of large-scale ice sheets seems to be the arrangement of continental land masses at or near the poles. The constant rearrangement of continents by plate tectonics can also shape long-term climate evolution. However, the presence or absence of land masses at the poles is not sufficient to guarantee glaciations or exclude polar ice caps. Evidence exists of past warm periods in Earth's climate when polar land masses similar to Antarctica were home to deciduous forests rather than ice sheets. The relatively warm local minimum between Jurassic and Cretaceous goes along with an increase of subduction and mid-ocean ridge volcanism due to the breakup of the Pangaea supercontinent. Superimposed on the long-term evolution between hot and cold climates have been many short-term fluctuations in climate similar to, and sometimes more severe than, the varying glacial and interglacial states of the present ice age. Some of the most severe fluctuations, such as the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, may be related to rapid climate changes due to sudden collapses of natural methane clathrate reservoirs in the oceans. A similar, single event of induced severe climate change after a meteorite impact has been proposed as reason for the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction event. Other major thresholds are the Permian-Triassic, and Ordovician-Silurian extinction events with various reasons suggested. The Quaternary sub-era includes the current climate. There has been a cycle of ice ages for the past 2.22.1 million years. Note in the graphic on the right the strong 120,000 year periodicity of the cycles, and the striking asymmetry of the curves. This asymmetry is believed to result from complex interactions of feedback mechanisms. It has been observed that ice ages deepen by progressive steps, but the recovery to interglacial conditions occurs in one big step. The graph on the left shows the temperature change over the past 12,000 years, 
from various sources. The thick black curve is an average. The climate forcing is the difference of radiant energy received by the Earth and the outgoing longwave radiation back to space. The radiative forcing is quantified based on the CO2 amount in the tropopause, in units of watts per square meter to the Earth's surface. Dependent on the radiative balance of incoming and outgoing energy, the Earth either warms up or cools down. Earth radiative balance originates from changes in solar insulation and the concentrations of greenhouse gases and aerosols. Climate change may be due to internal processes in Earth spheres and slash or following external forcings. The Earth's climate system involves the study of the atmosphere, biosphere, cryosphere, hydrosphere, and lithosphere, and the sum of these processes from Earth spheres is considered the processes affecting the climate. Greenhouse gases act as the internal forcing of the climate system. Particular interests in climate science and paleoclimatology focuses on the study of Earth climate sensitivity, in response to the sum of forcings. Examples On timescales of millions of years, the uplift of mountain ranges and subsequent weathering processes of rocks and soils and the subduction of tectonic plates, are an important part of the carbon cycle. The weathering sequesters CO2, by the reaction of minerals with chemicals and thereby removing CO2 from the atmosphere and reducing the radiative forcing. The opposite effect is volcanism, responsible for the natural greenhouse effect, by emitting CO2 into the atmosphere, thus affecting glaciation cycles. James Hansen suggested that humans emit CO2 10,000 times faster than natural processes have done in the past. Ice sheet dynamics and continental positions have been important factors in the long-term evolution of the Earth's climate. There is also a close correlation between CO2 and temperature, where CO2 has a strong control over global temperatures in Earth history. Faint Young Sun Paradox, Huronian Glaciation, Later Neoproterozoic Snowball Earth, Andean Saharan Glaciation, Carboniferous Rainforest Collapse, Permian Triassic Extinction Event, Oceanic Anoxic Events, Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction Event, Paleocene Eocene Thermal Maximum, Younger Dryas Slash The Big Freeze, Holocene Climatic Optimum, Extreme weather events of 535-536, medieval warm period, little ice age, year without a summer. Thermohaline circulation, life.